Today on America's Court with Judge Ross. That's if what you, you want say. To use the call. Well, I'm not going to have a young black child raised without lose. his father. So we can keep going That's back a contradiction. And, and what it's going to come down to you see, is you're contradicting yourself. Sit down. In my courtroom, it's about equity and fairness. You want him to pay 628? Yes, Your Honor. All right, knock my socks off. Justice should be more than just some foreign concept. I actually want you to learn something. The law talks about something may in fact be true, but can they prove it? And that's what's tough. Fair, firm, compassionate. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Martha Robinson claims her house guest accepted collect calls in her home without permission. She's suing Pamela Jones in the amount of $702.50. Ms. Jones admits to accepting the collect calls, but she claims she had a very good reason to do so. All rise. Remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties been sworn, Your Honor. There, get up at his office. This case is very interesting to me. But I want to start with you, Mom, Miss Robinson. Let's talk about your son. Okay, my son's name is Rodney Robinson. Yes. Um, I feel really sad to say that he's been incarcerated for an armed robbery that he committed uh, approximately nine months ago. And how old is he? 28 years old. And what were the circumstances as to how he got caught up, if you will? Uh, he and a few of his friends uh, decided uh, in the middle of the day to rob a convenience store. I take it this was not the first time there had been an issue with him? It's my understanding it's the very first time per Rodney. Okay. And that's unusual for a 28-year-old out of the blue. What was he doing before that? Not much of anything, to be honest with you. That you know, hanging sense. out around the way and uh, just Did hanging he work? Out. Uh, not at all. I've been. Did he go to school? Not at all. Okay. Didn't make it out of high school. But he was capable of producing a child. Absolutely. And that's where you come in. What's so. the story? What's going on with Rodney? He did not commit a robbery. He was actually in his car, or in his friend's car, rather, sitting outside of the store Were waiting there? for his friends to come out. No, that's what he told me. Did he plead to the charge or was there a jury trial that convicted well, him? Well, he pled to the charges based on the fact that he did not want to spend 20 or so years locked away. How old is your child? Our, our son together is nine. And when you met him, you said this guy has potential. Well, yeah, because I mean, he was very... I get that. Ten had... years later, you're able to ascertain if your observation was spot on. Because if you get somebody 10 years and 10 years later, you're still saying, yeah, they got potential and they're not necessarily working regularly and they're not going to school. Judge, with all due respect, we never lived on the street. I've never been homeless. I've never seen him do drugs. He's not uh, a drunkard or anything like that. Fair He's enough. not a violent person. Do the two person. of you live together? They he live came with me. To, we've only lived with you, Martha, for about two Two and a half years. That okay. is correct. Well, that's two and a half years too long. Well, we help her. Okay. It's not as if she carries this well, when financial you say we, burden. What was Rodney doing to help his mom? Well, what Rodney does is he works independently. He works with one friend who has a construction company who he assists on various jobs. Let me put housing. it this way. What type of work do you do? Well, I work part-time in retail. Okay. But I'm also a full-time student, and uh, I'm going to school to be a medical assistant. Okay. See, Rodney has good taste. You, I don't know. Thank you. That's and your I, son, though. Well, and only a mother could say that. Thank you. That's why I don't want him, Jamel, to have any connection with his father at this point. Jamel has a great relationship well, wait a minute. Let's go with back. his father. You don't want your grandson to have any connection with his father? I don't think it's a healthy thing to have my nine-year-old grandson deal with a child who has lied to me. When he was incarcerated for five months, I looked my son in the eye and asked him, are you innocent, baby? And he told me three times, mommy, I'm innocent. Coming up on America's Court. This is all she, about the well-being of Jamel. Okay, Pamela? Is it, Pamela? About, is it, Ladies, is it really? One at a yes, time. it is. Hold on.
And later... I was just posting suggestions that what I wanted to do for the next MonsterCon, which was the big convention <laughs> for us. The MonsterCon. Yes. I tell you, the nerds have taken over the universe, boy. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by... If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Martha Robinson, who is suing Pamela Jones for unauthorized collect calls. And the issue here is you keep using the phone and racking up all these collect Call I help her pay these bills. This is all she, about the well-being of Jamel. Okay, is Pamela? About, is Ladies, it, and your is honor, it really? One at a yes, time. It Hold is. on! This is not just about this nine-year-old. Because we got several issues going. We got a mother dealing with the pain of raising a male child and seeing him incarcerated. We got a mother who's dealing with the pain of having to raise a child whose father is incarcerated. And the difference is, if you're in your own place and you're preparing and taking care of things that need to be taken care of, make all the collect calls you want. But you can't make it sound like if she says, no more collect call charges, and you do it anyway in her house. <laughs> I mean, you're being disrespectful no, to her. No, her big deal is she doesn't Stop. want my son to have a relationship Stop. with his father. Fine. Then you figure out another way of communicating if she says, do not call him and accept those charges either way in my abode. Well, we've already done that. Okay. And she wants to act as if I'm not there to help Hold her in any way. She Pamela, has told are you, you crazy? Ma'am, Miss Robinson, I got this. She has told you, this is my house. Do not make those calls. I don't make any calls. I receive them. Okay. When I said Rodney made a smart choice in you, I'm going to have to dial that back a little bit. That, I take that as an insult. And you can say what you, you want, but she's aware of what I do for her let household. Let me just make sure I am perfectly clear. Martha, can you handle your household on your own? Ma'am, no. you don't get to ask the questions up in here. Let her answer. Ma'am, now you're trying my patience. Because you can ignore her, but that's not going to fly up in here. You sound like the 12 people that were in the jury. Ma'am. You're making assumptions. Ma'am. Pamela. You got a smart mouth. I am insulting you because you clearly don't understand R-E-S-P-E-C-T. This woman is saying, don't use the, the phone. You're saying, I'm going to do it anyway. You come here That's and you think you're going you gonna to step to That's me? That's not what I'm saying. Do, I'm you, saying. do you hear what I'm saying? And I'm saying it's important that you know has a relationship with I don't care what you're saying. I'm obviously. saying to you that your position has no merit. That's if what you, you say. to use the call Well, well I'm the not going to have a young black child raised without his father. So we can keep going That's back a and contradiction. Forth. And what it's going to come down to is... You're contradicting yourself in front of the court. Fair enough. You're out. Come on, you're out of here. Now say something. Let's go. Rodney didn't do it. Out. She started off really well. But now I understand what you're dealing with. And I understand you're thinking about Jamel. Right. Sometimes you got to exercise some tough love. And I know some people think it's a good idea for kids to go visit jails and see their loved ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they really understand the psychological impact of seeing your loved one locked up. It's hard for adults. So to, to walk a nine-year-old to a jail, to, to know that you're talking to your daddy on the phone and he's in jail, you're going to have to move her out. Okay. Yesterday, you're going to have to do it. You can continue to have a relationship with your grandson, but she's got to go. But my grandson, Judge, I got to protect my grandson. You're in a tough position. I understand. Based on the evidence before this court, the gavel will come down in favor of the plaintiff, Ms. Robinson. We will make sure you get the $702.50, ma'am. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you, Your Case Honor. Case closed.
Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $702.50. The judge got it. I may no longer have a son, but I do have a grandson I can still save. The judge did not want to listen to my point of view. I just want what's best for my son, and that's for him to have both of his parents in his life. And coming up on America's Court with Judge Ross. So I was walking around like an hour, and I noticed that all these pictures were being taken of me, and I thought it was because I'm blowing up. <laughs> but I realized really quickly, I looked down, and my whole breast is exposed. Closed captioning provided by... This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Brittany Bayo claims she lost out on wages as an internet sensation cosplay model. Ms. Bayo is suing Michael Zander in the amount of $10,000. Mr. Zander claims the wardrobe malfunction wasn't his fault and says he doesn't owe the plaintiff anything. Explain to me this world of cosplay. I, I think I know a little bit about it. Basically, Your Honor, cosplay is a type of modeling where you reinvent characters from comic books, movies, anime. Why is it such a big thing right now, Mr. Zen? Because you do costumes for these oh, people, Oh, yes, right? because uh, the community has been growing, and it's, um, this cosplay community, is, it's been getting huge, and it's been getting a lot of headway So when you Japan. go down to, in, 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 we're in Los Angeles, when you go on the Hollywood Boulevard and you see people dressed as characters, is that, would that be considered part of it, like um, people are doing it for money, or...? Uh, sometimes they just do it for fun. Sometimes if they're good enough or they portray the character good. And, and you like doing the costuming. I love making those costumes. And how long have you been doing that, I've sir? been doing them for a few years now. Okay. I used to be a pizza delivery boy and then... That's a can... leap from pizza to uh, costumes, but that's yeah. your passion. Yeah, this is my passion. And two of you met and then take it from there. So I met Mr. Xander um, about a year and a half ago. He had a really awesome costume on. So, he was wearing the costume. Yes. Is this a costume that you designed? Oh uh, yes, of course. Okay. So, and so you like this costume? So so naturally I was gravitated towards him. So, and naturally. I found out that he he was a fan of my work as well because this is when I started to really blow up. Yes. Got it. Uh huh. <laughs> be a sensation mm -hmm. via like Twitter, you know. So you were going to be which character, which is why the two of you got together. Right. Well, my specialty is more like dark, kind of like vampire. Okay. Vampirous. The two of you made an agreement that you would wear one of his costumes. Well, Your Honor, what exactly happened yes. was I was on my social media blowing up. Right, blowing and, up on a daily basis. Yep. Right. And I was just posting suggestions that what I wanted to do for the next Monster Con, which was the big convention <laughs> for us. The Monster Con. Yes. All right, and so you were telling people you were having some thoughts as to what you wanted. And he posted and offered to do my costume for free. And is I that mean, true? Yes, it is. At some point, you had to get her measurements. I right. just she had to, to send be... them to me. I sent them all to him. Okay. Email. And and when you received them, mm -hmm. at some point, you didn't try it on or anything back and forth? That's when it started to go a little downhill okay. from there. Coming up on America's Court. What's in the bag? Let me see. This is the after effect of the malfunction. All right, show me. Closed captioning provided by... This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Brittany Bayo, who is suing Michael Zander for lost wages. Well, when he offered to do it for free, I just thought it was really awesome because it's very expensive to make costumes. Let's and not I understand, lie. I understand that he went through a lot, but he didn't get the costume to me until the night before of the major convention. And that's not one thing that you have to wait for because well, you have to you make sure it see fits. Your Honor, like I have a lot of customers, a lot of paying customers that I have to design for. And so I did then why, well, I offer for free then if you have right. all Because I could do it and I did get it done. It was just last minute. Okay. And he I spent never, all night. No, he never well, he, contacted me listen, or anything. You get what you pay for. Right. All right? You, want, you got it for free. How much would the costume have been valued at? If valued? If I would have been paid for it, yes. I would say maybe between like $90, $60, depend, because of the time consumption. Oh, that's all. I'm, I was expecting some large amount. Uh, no, it wasn't super exuberant. Do you have a picture of the outfit or anything? I don't have a picture of it, but I have the initial or the after effect of what happened. Okay, well, what happened? So I put the costume on the day of the convention. Yes. And I saw Mr. Xander there. Okay. And it, it's basically, it was all black, corset, skirt, and like a thin lace underneath with a cape. It's vampire theme. Right, I got um, it. I put it on. When I saw it, I was like, okay, well, it looks a little cheap. 
but you know, it's okay. It was last minute. You get so, what you pay for. Right. So I put it on and it felt really loose, especially up in this, the busty area. Okay. And that's not something that you want to feel loose at a convention like that. No. Just because you don't want to expose yourself. Sure. And I told him, I said, listen, I don't feel comfortable in this. It's very loose. And usually, I mean, I'm not a big follower of vampire, but usually things are actually more tight and fit, right? Right. But this one, well, the corset was tighter, but it was just up here that it was loose, like the straps. Oh, it was, it, was, it, it had straps. Mm -hmm. What's in the bag? Let me see. This is the after effect of the malfunction. All right, show me. Judge Ross's verdict when America's Court returns. You're watching America's Court with Judge Ross. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. So this was the under part. And I was wearing a pasty, which I also have. Okay. So basically... When you say pasty, meaning to cover your breasts. To cover, yeah, the okay. major part. Right. So this was it. This was the top part. Okay. When I put it on, it was very loose. Okay. Within an hour of going into the convention, after he did nothing about it, when I told him I wasn't comfortable because in it... Because he was there. You were there at yeah, that point. Was, but it's, and did she tell you that she was uncomfortable? She did tell me it was uncomfortable, but and I trusted you... my work. And um, I did it based completely on her measurements. Right. So I really, I do this for a living, so I'm fairly confident in what but I But even, do. you know, and I know a little bit about this because my wife did work in the fashion industry. When they have form models, fit models, as they call them, and they try on things, but that doesn't mean that every 36, 24, 36 is going to be the same on every woman, so there may even still be some adjustments, right? right. And he never contacted me about the measurements you or get to try what it you on. You pay for. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm. And so, so I take it there was a problem. So I was walking around like an hour and I noticed that all these pictures were being taken of me and I thought it was because I'm blowing up. <laughs> but I realized really quickly, I looked down and my whole breast is exposed because this rip, this was torn. And, and you're so loose. busy being in the moment right. at MonsterCon that right. you're not even realizing. And I don't even realize it's going on for about a couple of seconds and then I looked down because I was like, oh gosh. You know, like, what am I going to do? And the worst part is people Now, was start, the pasty still covering? The pasty was, but okay. the rest of it was exposed. And okay. I was very, very humiliated. I can and imagine. the worst part about this is I felt that he did it on purpose. So why would he want other people to exactly. see his costume not do what it was it was supposed to do? That? How does that help him? Well, that's the same reason. Like, why would I want that to happen to me to lose out on a big contract? Well, you said he did it on purpose. That's what I feel. I understand. Based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, this is an easy case. The gavel has to come down in favor of the defendant. I mean, there's no contract. Right. Right? You're going to be fine. But in terms of this, <clears throat> not so much. Your matter's dismissed. Case closed. All rise. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I still believe that Michael sabotaged my wardrobe, but I will sign a contract next time. I would never sabotage my own creation. And like the judge said, I don't know you anything. Follow America's Court on Facebook and Twitter. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.